Hey guys, this is No Solution. I'm Scott. And God damn it. I really didn't want to do this video. Um uh this is the decades thread that's been going around where you have to pick one album from each decade. Uh and then that's the only album you can listen to from that decade forever. Um I don't know why, but I get lost in these thought experiments and it starts like stressing me out and I don't even want to think about it anymore. Um but watching some other people's videos uh, particularly Gary at Physical Format Rock and Roll, he just kind of rattled some off, and uh, there's my list, and you know, and you know, he's right. Who cares? It's all imaginary, and we could make a list like this, and it could change tomorrow. Um, so I was nominated twice by Steve at All the Worlds of Stage and by Garage Geek. So since I was nominated twice, I'm kind of going to do two timelines on this one. Um, the first timeline is the timeline we live in, and the second timeline is a horrible dystopian timeline where uh, Fish never answers that ad uh, in the paper that for a bassist and a vocalist, and never joins Marillion, and Marillion is a pub band that just kind of fades away and never goes anywhere. So I thought that that's the Garage Geek one, because Garage Geek is more into comic books and alternate timelines and things like that, so... Uh, I'm going to cheat right off the bat, and I know Garage Geek would appreciate that, because he loves to cheat in these contests. So, uh, we will start off with uh, the 60s. So, one pick for the 60s, because there's no Merlion in it anyway. Um, kind of a chalk pick. Uh, the Beatles self-titled, a.k.a. the White Album. This is the 30th anniversary, so 1998 CD deal that was kind of like a vinyl replica thing. Um, no real difference other than that. I think it has the postcards in here. I think that's, yeah, it does. Um, whatever, I'm not going to pull them out. Oh, there they are. So if you have the vinyl, you've seen them, but, um, yeah, that's just the version I ended up getting because that was kind of when I got into the Beatles and it seemed cooler than the, the fat boy case version. Um, yeah, and the reason I picked this, it was really with the 60s. I don't, I'm don't, i not that versed in it. It was kind of either this or Zappa. And honestly, Zappa's 60s material I find more interesting than entertaining. So if I could only pick one album to listen to, it would be The Beatles. And I'm cheating because there's just more material on here. Um, some really great songs. Some kind of, you know, I could leave Revolution num number 9 forever. But um, you still got about 80 minutes of cool songs on here. So that's my 60s pick. Uh, 70s pick had to be Sabbath. Hard to leave like Rush and so many other classics behind, but uh, and I picked Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. Uh, it was between this and Sabotage. Sabotage has the Am I Going Insane, which isn't that great. So I picked just kind of the stronger album. Um, yeah, classic. This is the Castle 90s version with the, the sound that I prefer, actually, even from the newer remasters all right now we get into the split timeline so first i'll go with steve the real timeline uh i will of course i steve was correct he wanted he picked me because he wanted to see if i'm gonna pick all marillion albums well so far steve you're right so i got clutching at straws from marillion 1987 this is the picture disc version in the back yeah just kind of a neat version to have honestly i don't really play this as i'm sure most people don't really play their picture discs that much but showed up in a local shop good price couldn't pass it up um so clutching at straws is the final album with fish and kind of you can read it as his uh um kind of his resignation letter from Merlion. most of the lyrics about how he's tired of being in the band so but fantastic songs um the the opening trilogy hotel hobbies warm at circles and that time of the night uh just such a fantastic opener for the album they still even with the current incarnation of the band they still play that on occasion um yeah just an awesome album front to back um not the album i would recommend to start with marillion but my favorite of the fish era uh, okay, and then in the world where Marillion does not exist, 
Uh, I went with Operation Mind Crime from Queensryche. Concept album, probably universally recognizes their masterpiece. Uh, just a killer hour of music all the way through. This is a the deluxe edition that I actually just got. That's why it's still in the shrink. Uh, it was on sale for Prime Day and got low enough that I couldn't pass it up since it's one of my favorite albums of all time. So I'm sure everybody knows this, but if not, check it out. The Queen's Rick is more than Silent Lucidity. Um, yeah, and on and these picks, I kind of... I should have just done it right away because I kept like, I'd write something down and then I think of something else. I write that down. And so what I kind of, how I kind of just narrowed it down to one was things I hadn't shown before and, or a interesting packaging. So because who cares, right? Uh, it's just a thought experiment. I have to keep telling myself that. Okay. Now we move on to the nineties, go back to Steve's timeline. Steve is right again. I picked a Merlion album. Um, maybe probably one would not expect Merlion.com from 1999. This is one I don't think is thought of very highly, but, uh, I mean, so awesome track list all the way through, uh, deserve go rich tumble down the years. A great one. They don't play very often. Interior Lulu, another great one. They don't play very often. Um, and this, while, doesn't reach the heights of some of the other albums it's just so good all the way through and this was the period where they were really scrambling because they were kind of an indie again and so 97 98 99 they released albums but well, now it takes them four to six years to release an album and the to keep up the quality for for all those releases it was was pretty amazing and yeah so merlion.com from 1999 all right now, in Garage Geek's timeline, I went with The Wild Hearts, and I'm going to, going to cheat in the spirit of Garage Geek. Uh, this is the, their 1994 album, P-H-U-Q. Ha, 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 get it? I, you know, I sat on the side, so I put the album over here, and then I didn't do it. What a dope. Um, was it 95? I think I said 94. It's 95. Uh, so this is their second full-length album. Uh, the Wild Hearts, if you don't know, were really awesome hard rock band from the UK um, described sometimes as the Beatles meets Metallica really catchy, awesome melodies, but with really heavy, crunchy riffs as well. Um, probably my favorite wild hearts album. And this was originally intended to be a double album, but the record company said no. Well, since it's an alternate time or since, uh, since I'm changing timelines anyway, um, I'm going to say it was a double album. So I'm going to include this, uh, Fishing for Luckies, lenticular deal there, uh, which contained another album's worth of material that most of it was supposed to be on this. So that is my pick for the 90s. All right, Steve, back to Steve's timeline. Let's see. Will he be correct? Yes, he will. I chose Marbles from 2004. This is the mail order version that contained both discs of material. You can now get both discs in retail as well. But uh, it's kind of a lenticular, not, I don't know. I don't know what you call that. See the marble there? Kind of a neat little slipcase. And there's the CD cover. Yeah, this is pretty much regarded as like the, well, I was going to say the modern classic of Marillion, but it's now 20 years old. So I guess not so modern anymore, but kind of seen as like, a comeback album for them where they got a lot of attention from it. Just fantastic. Uh, Steve just discussed this, this at length. There's one song on it, Angelina in the middle of the second disc. That's kind of like, eh, but other than that, it's just incredible all the way through. So marbles from Merlion. Okay. And my alternate reality pick is in absentia from porcupine tree. 2003 i believe um this is the fancy box set version uh incredible incredible album i like pretty much every porcupine tree album except for the brand new one uh but this is one that kind of condensed if if i wanted to say to someone this is what porcupine, porcupine tree sounds like i would play them this album uh progressive rock hard rock uh just an amazing album I would guess a lot of you have heard of it. You've heard Steve talk about it a lot, but 
Um, yeah, so this version has like B sides and demos and a DVD and a big book and whatnot, big write ups. Um, not really doing a great job showing it, so sorry about that. Um, yeah. You get the idea. If you like this album, I would say if you can find this for a good price, it's worth it. I don't know if it's worth $100, whatever it's going for, but I found a deal on it. All uh, right. Now we're in the 2010s. Will Steve Street continue? Yes. I chose Fear, the Merlion album from 2016. This is the fancy mail order signed version with my name in it and all that nonsense. Um, so this is one that I did not like when it came out. It took me a few listens to kind of get into it. Uh, maybe the most uh, epic and challenging of the Merlion albums, I would say. Uh, there aren't a lot of traditional choruses in it. Um, so it took a while. There are a lot of long tracks with like more movements than, than uh, verse chorus structures. But uh, once I got my head around it, I, I think it's a genius album. And uh, anytime they play stuff from it live, it's, it's, it's always a highlight. So, yeah, I would say Fear. This, is, this would be at the top, near the top of my Merlion list if I ever did a ranking, which I don't know if I could do. But um, 2016 is Fear. Check it out if you have not. All right. And in the non-Merlion timeline, I went with the only extreme metal album on my list. I don't know what that means. Does it mean I'm a poser? Quite possibly. Uh, Nocturnal Mortem with Verity. Verity is the English translation. It's a Ukrainian word that I cannot pronounce and don't know. Um, so this is the limited box here. Uh, it came with a poster, which I've hung up, and a t-shirt, which I wear. So only in the box there's some like autographed cards and the digibook version of the cd so this is ukrainian pagan black metal um actually not really my favorite nocturnal mortem album but of this decade uh i had to pick it um just incredible black metal melodies um with folk instruments a lot of a lot of uh folk in, folk uh influence on this one um a lot of guests Guest uh, musicians, violin, jaw harp, uh, bandura, dulcimer, cello. Um, yeah, just such a such a dense and, and lush production on this too. Uh, beautiful album. So now we go to Steve's timeline. Will it be a clean sweep, the 80s through the 2020s? Yes, it will. This is the 2022 Marillion album, An Hour Before It's Dark. Uh, almost as good as Fear. In time, it might surpass it for me. A bit more conventional, a bit more listener-friendly, but no less powerful. Uh, this ha also has another uh, song that makes me cry on it, so there's that. Uh, the final song, Care. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, ba I babble about Marillion too much, so I will stop now, but... That's my pick for the 2020s. And uh, this one I have talked about a lot. This is my non Merlion 2020s pick. Devin Townsend, Lightwork. Uh, Eli and I did an hour long stream just about this album. Just a, a, a triumph of Devin Townsend. Um, he's, you never know what he's going to do, ne do next. And this one was. Uh, simultaneously poppier than I expected, but also with uh, some curveballs thrown in there. And yeah, just a beautiful listen. And also comes with a bonus disc of called Nightwork of songs that did not fit the concept. Um, he always writes way too much for each album, and he started including a bonus disc of just what he calls demos, but anyone else would call finished songs. So usually you get like an entire bonus album with his, so that's my 2020 pick. Uh, Light Work by Devin Townsend. Wow, this is way longer than I thought. Uh, and I'm supposed to nominate other people to do this. So, since I chose one Extreme Metal album, I wore an Extreme Metal shirt just to try to keep my cred intact. I doubt it worked. Um, I want Trevor at Fumes of, Fumes of Hatred to do this um, because he will show me how I should do an Extreme Metal one. 
Uh, Kim at This Is Music. I would be interested in seeing his since he's got such an eclectic uh, taste and collection. And uh, Christian Osario, I would like to see his as well. And by the way, these are not, please don't feel pressured if you don't want to do it. Whatever. That's fine. Um, I, those are just people I, I thought of that and hadn't already been nominated and I'd be interested in seeing what they did with it. So uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys. And I'll see you on the next one. Later.